I would like to report a murder. <laughs> Whoever did this board, like, whew. Hey guys, it's Chris, and this is yet another Amiga 3000 repair. So I'm in the middle of three Amiga 3000 repairs, but this one's kind of special. This one belongs to Mr. Allen. Hi, Mr. Allen, if you're watching, here's your, here's your girl. It came in to me um, very well packaged from way northwest Canada. And he has an Amiga 3000 that was recapped and hasn't worked since it was recapped. When it came in, it had a coin cell lithium battery or whatever, NICAD battery with a copper bar soldered across the posts bridging the positive. First thing I did was clip that out. We're going to put a regular coin holder cell snap-in battery. Since I'm in the middle of three repairs, I kind of have half, half parts thrown together. So this is uh, the LED board from Rusty. Along with Rusty's power supply, my RGB Dell monitor. We're going to do RGB first because I've had just the worst luck with flicker fixers. I did put the daughter board and it was packaged separately. Power supply resting on the SCSI port to elevate it. It's on cardboard. There's no metal touching. We're on power. Let's just see what happens. We're going to look for the reset bus which based on the quality of this recap job I guarantee you this is not going to go high. If you hear a printer noise I am printing a 3D faceplate for another Case. Here we go. There's our low. Got a signal? Nope. No, get a high. This has Kickstart 3.1 ROMs in it. So one thing I noticed with this board before I tear into it is when it came in, the buster chip right here in the front was popped out like most of the way. Gave it a squish. I don't know. I'm probably going to have to pull them all out. I don't know why. A recapper, if you're just doing a recap, would unseat the ICs. Sockets look fine. All right. Oh my! What? What in the hell of 14 gauge wire is this? First things I have to do is undo this burnt through. So these aren't even connected. So that's gonna need a bodge wire. This is totally burnt through. That's burnt off. I don't know what the hell that is. This is totally gone. So, this is Ramsey, and you burnt the board horribly, putting in the wrong size cap. Your 16 470s are 50 470s, and they're about Empire State Building tall. You remove the terminators from the board. Great, so we have our work cut out for us. While this board doesn't have battery damage, look that I can see battery damage. Who knows, it might have barfed. This Agnes has been out because it's been scratched numerous times. While looks can be deceiving with such a beautiful 3000 example, 16 mega RAM, almost stabbed myself right in the face. You never know what you're gonna get under the hood. This is freaking hilarious. It's sad, I'm sorry. But we'll get it sorted. I'll have to go through the entire recap and then pin out and see what Denise is doing. I can tell where the job was done because they didn't clean any of their schmutz. Anyway, we're going to get started on this. Remember how I said looks can be deceiving? My first continuity check is always top pin to the second pin over here and nothing. So I'm going to continue like I always do around the old Denise and we'll see what we get. 9.26 a.m. Monday. Guess what? All this RAM is in backwards. Hello from several hours later. I would like to report a murder. <laughs> Whoever did this board, like, whew, must have went in with the biggest tools. Even these pickle fingers. I mean, take your time. So check this out. So here in this nice alcohol wiped spot, take a gander at that. Why are these punched out like they were shot? And here, there's supposed to be some traces that run for Agnes. They're missing. Also, here's Gary. Who is this Gary character? Gary is needed for boot initialization. Do you see a problem? See some busted traces? And over here, 
that's uh there yep that's that's gone that's a ground plane so what appeared to be a simple recap it was working before you touched it kind of thing now I'm cleaning up someone else's work this is all over the place the whole board everywhere there's a cap they went in with a, a solder sucker or something and just ground out the pegs and that just blew all the vias so here is Ramsey down below that just looks beautiful and that's only the half of it we haven't even gotten to the amber chip VCC bus is exposed they busted through anyway I have my work cut out for me and there will be some new wires on the bottom to fix the trace mess just to get the board functioning then add into the fact that they put all the RAM in backwards she's in an anti-static bag this capacitor next to the power rail A is incorrect and B just snapped off in my hand this one's gonna be another fun tracer 5 14 p.m. I have gone through and fixed a lot of them just traces and bodge wire here and there uh, I'm writing okay on the board where I've okayed it I'm slapping some hot glue over the area just to make sure it's covered I went and redid the caps again I'm using the caps that were there and I'm only this far I have several this is all seems to be okay because it wasn't touched too bad I'm finding little uh, sharpie markers like I use dot dot for connecting points maybe it was the previous uh, repairers attempt to fix their F up but I have many to go every big cap was stabbed. I took the battery out. I'll put a new one in. I'm working my way through it. I'm several hours in, like always. And I took all the RAM out because it was in backwards. You saw that earlier. So I'm going to continue on and uh, hopefully we'll be ready for a proper fire up. And if so, we're good. I'm on this corner here where the serial port is. And look, cause somebody smashed that up right there. It's not me. I arrived this way. Luckily, it's ground plane, nothing major. It does have a little clip piece where the boards are perforated together at the factory it's not going to hurt nothing but uh it does start to separate here on the top so just keep that in mind always be careful of this little tip i'm running into some weird stuff where there's like balls of solder just falling off and day two of mr allen's board it's 9 53 a.m and uh this isn't a consecutive day this is about a week later um Whomever recapped this board used these big Empire State Building uh, 5470s instead of 16470s, which is normally fine. I would do 25470 myself. But whomever put these caps in just smashed every trace possible. This thing's starting to look like a damn dinosaur on the bottom. I mean, I got bodge wires and patches and solder drags and metal clips and points that just don't exist and wires everywhere. And I still can't get it to even do anything, like nothing. I can get a VGA on the monitor to go bip, like it's getting a signal, dead, nothing, nothing. It's like the daughter board's not in, which, which I do put in when I turn it on. So, sockets are re-cleaned. I took the Agnes out. I took the Buster out. I took the Fat Gary out. The D Mac. I took uh, Ramsey out. I cleaned all the sockets. I pin checked everything. Did not take Amber out because I don't have its socket. Don't want to mess with it. I put Diagram currently in here from Mr. John Hertel. That normally will at least show something. I get not a nothing. You stood, butt wide. Now with Diagram, it will always kick it in high. I won't have to wait for the the pull down pull ups or whatever to go through the reset bus. It's just, it's nuts. Ugh. I have oscilloscoped the clocks. I have clocks on everything. That's where I'm at. I'm going to go back to toning out chips again. Just in case, you know, one of my wires is wrong. But, um, I went over it twice, so third time's a charm. Maybe I missed something. 1035 Mr. Allen's board. I'm hooking the power supply back up. I found one capacitor that kind of popped through and broke a trace. It was a decoupling cap near the power supply. Diagram is in. If this works, I'll get the diagram. Flickery, flickery, flick, flick. Here we go. Yes! You know what that means? That means diagram, baby. 
Maybe? Yes. I don't have any RAM in it. I'm just doing the chip RAM. Good. Remember, I'm NTSC, so it's all weird. Let's see, NTSC will fail. That's fine. NTSC will fail. Graphic test. Diagram. Here is the real test. We're going to flip it to scan double. Yes. So that's the scan doubled amber. Bingo, chingo. Whew. That was a pain in the butt. So I kept Mr. Allen's 3.1 ROMs uh, alive and well here. So we're going to use my Gennard. And what I've been noticing with the Gennard here is I have used it so much, her legs are just spreading a little too far. Ah. So I'm going to bend the tips back in. That way when I pull out these ROMs that won't pull out because they're the stupid FR216 ROMs that I have to kind of pry up on because they're SIL turn pins that I just freaking love. There we go, so we're booting Amiga test kit here. Oh, I'm gonna fall, turn off the overhead light. Now, memory. I don't have my memory in yet, so I haven't done the fast RAM, but I just want to make sure I have a booting system. Testing the chip RAM, it's all in the glue logic. If you're wondering what the hell is when you keep saying glue logic, what is glue logic? Glue logic is this crap over here. What does it mean? Glue logic means basically that you're using like a CMOS or a TTL type 74 LS chip to go in between the actual logic chips. Kind of like can set buffers or set voltages or all sorts of cool stuff. But usually they were used in older circuitry before CPLDs and FPGAs kind of stuff came out. Long story short, lots of chips on the board help the other chips do their job basically. It's called glue logic. Anyway, we can do the 15 kilohertz mode on Amber also. She's good. And we'll do back to 31. It's a clearer display. CIAs, precision timers. This one's nicer on NTSC than Diagram is. RTC battery backed up clock is not present yet, but I have an Amiga kit clock that I ordered for Mr. Allen. Audio, this is the new Keir Frazier one with the mod. Audio is groovy, test channels. You have bass line, drums, synths, and stereo synth. So we're good to go. Mr. Allen, guess what? You're back. Mortimer, we're back. You got your 3000 done. We are gonna test the Zorro slots and I gotta put the RAM back in. These are the Zip 20. Uh, you either love them or you hate them. And they go in these slots right here. Now, you know that they're a big pain in the butt. And the problem I had with this RAM the last time is they were all in backwards. They go in banks of four, okay? Meaning there are slots, there's all these slots, right? Well, there's four banks, slot zero, slot one, slot two, slot three, that's one bank. But they have to be in zero, 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 zero. So zero, 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 then zero, 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 and then one, 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 two, three, and so on. That's how you load up all 16 megs of RAM. Now. There's also an issue with static column versus page RAM. The Amiga 3000 will not boot properly or will not work at all with the wrong RAM installed. I need to use the Helmet of Goober. First four megs of RAM right here. Let's just turn it on. Uh, let me put Amiga test kit in the drive in the GoTek. Hit it. No SCSI, no internal floppy. Takes a second to figure out that it wants to boot. No battery to remember the SCSI settings. Oh yeah, I gotta find out what I do with that thing. Don't remember. Okay, so four megs, one, two, three, four. Two megs of chip. I'm gonna test each RAM range in the fast RAM when I put the four chips in. You have to stick them in in the proper amounts. You gotta stick them in in four meg increments. And I only have a couple more. The plus note that this booted with that RAM even is better. I will be in your way a lot 
But you can see how I have the four banks, right? So I'm going to take my next chip. Whew, and then the third. You see these legs here? I stick, I'll do this backer socket, so I do it anyway. I stick the back legs in, and then I kind of out smash my hand against the riser card. They're all folded over, and if they're not, I use a little poker tool and make sure I got my leg. Come on, get over the line. There we go. You don't want to hammer down. I always give it the wiggle wiggle, see? Now, why did I skip a socket? Just for example, because... So, we're just going to do a test all memory. I'm going to test regions. So, we're going to test F2, the 16 mig fast RAM region. Anyway, as you can see, uh, memory tests have succeeded. 18 mig total memory detected. Take a picture for the owner. I need to test the Zorro card. We're going to use the multi-face 3 card. It's my go-to tester for Amigas because I can just stick it in and hit the button and test. For this, we're going to do the double mouse button. We're going to hold the camel toe down. Get the Workbench 3.1 ROM screen where we can select the boot device. We can also click the expansion boards and that will allow us to see if the boards are working. There we go. Zorro is working in the top slot, which means it'll work in all the other slots because they travel up. Auto detect is working. Board number one. Boot options, yep. Display options, the whole nine. Original enhanced chipset. You only get this with a ECS machine. NTSC or PAL. I got the battery in. PAL. We're going to test the RTC real quick and then we're done. If you hear any goofy noises in the background, Mona's walking on the treadmill. Man, alright, so we're going to go to uh, battery backed up clock. We're going to set the date and time. Well, hell with it, it's May 4th. Alright. Now, the trick with this is back out, turn the machine off. It's off. I kill it by the power, so the mains are drained. Turning it back on, does it hold time? If it does, I'm good. If not, I have a trace to fix. It held. Groovy. So everything's working. Another Amiga has been saved. You son of a. Ah. So, Mr. Allen. I hope this finds you well and I hope you're able to enjoy this unit now that you have your Amiga 3000 functioning and you can enjoy it hopefully for many more years. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my patrons and supporters who help make these free pairs possible. And as always, I hope you learned something.